that we were standing here on the first Sunday of January 2023. And Lord, today, the first Sunday of December 23, Lord, we have so much to be thankful for. Lord, we can't stop praising your name. We can't stop praising your name, Lord. We can't stop praising your name, Lord, because you're truly worthy to be praised. What a mighty, mighty God you are. Lord, for some of us, January was so hard. February was even worse. March, April, June. All the way to December. And Lord, some of us are still in the hospital. Some of us still maybe don't have all our memories. Some of us still maybe were concerned about our health. But Lord, we have you. Because you told us, Lord, of the good news. The good news that you will never, never, never leave us nor forsake us. That you will always with us, even when we don't know you with us. That you're always with us every minute, every hour. Because you love us so much. And so, Lord, we exalt you today. We open up our arms to you. We worship you today. We worship you.
is from the Latin Adventus, which means coming. The four candles in the Advent wreath represents the four Sundays of Advent prior to Christmas Sunday, the day we celebrate the birth of Christ. The circular shape of the Advent wreath symbolizes God's constant and unchanging nature. The white candle in the center represents Christ, the light of the world. On the first Sunday of Advent, we are indeed standing on the promise of hope. That blessed hope was that God would send his only son, Jesus, to save us from our sins. And so, in anticipation of his coming, we light this candle of hope. We light it with full assurance, knowing that we are standing on God's promise that cannot fail. Hallelujah. Thank you, Deaconess. Ethan, Deaconess Pratcher, for reminding us of the hope that we have in this Christmas season. And we want to invite you to join us as you rest on your feet and sing this hymn that reminds us of the hope that we have as God has sent Christ into the world to bring us hope, peace, love, and joy. Hark the herald angels sing. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy mild. God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise. Join the triumph of the skies.
Christ with love and prayers. Advent Week 1, Hope. The first week of Advent, also known as the Week of Hope, marks the beginning of the Christian season of preparation for the celebration of Christ's birth. It is a time of reflection, anticipation, and spiritual renewal. This week, let us focus on the hope that Advent brings, as we remember that even in the darkest of time, God's light is always present. The Elite Ministry is honoring our Cornerstone members ages 80 and above at an upcoming holiday luncheon taking place on Tuesday, December 12, 2023 at 12 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. If you need someone to bring you, you are welcome to also invite this person as your guest. We ask that you advise us of your guest when you RSVP by Friday, December 8th, 2023 to Sister Janice Willis at 302-478-6181 or via the email listed there on the screen. The Elite Ministry is extending a helping hand to a cornerstone family of nine individuals in desperate need of personal care items and essential paper goods, such as paper towels, toilet paper, toothpaste, deodorant, soap, plastic utensils, and paper plates are greatly appreciated. You can contribute to this cause by dropping off your donation in the designated storage tubs that are located in the lobby. The deadline to make these contributions is December 18, 2023. Reminder, honoring Sister Felicia DeShell, a celebration of service and dedication. Please join us in celebrating the retirement of our beloved Sister Felicia on December 17, 2023, during the 10 a.m. worship service. A small reception will follow in the fellowship hall where we can all express our heartfelt gratitude for her unwavering dedication and service to the Cornerstone family. Habit of the Spirit t-shirts. If you haven't done so already, get Habit of the Spirit long sleeve t-shirts. They are available this Sunday, December 3rd, and next Sunday, December 10th, 2023 for sale. Full payment is due at the time of signing. The sizes are small through extra large and 2X through 4X. If you're interested in purchasing, please direct all inquiries to Sister Regina Dunnigan after service. I would like to thank Pastor and my CFBC family for all of the love and prayer shown to myself, Alex, and my mom during the passing of my aunt. The cards and messages have meant so much. Sister Denise Washington. My family and I thank you so much for your prayers, the phone calls, cards, and love gifts that were sent. This is what God's love is all about. Without your prayers, there's no way we could have survived the pain of losing my sister Sophie and my cousin Carolyn. My family and I thank you so much for keeping us lifted up in your prayers. Praise God for his everlasting love and CFB support. Sister Nanny Washington. Ongoing study opportunities, 8.30 a.m. Adult Sunday School. Our Adult Sunday School class meets in person at 8.30 on Sunday mornings in the sanctuary. You can also join us virtually at the Zoom information listed there on the screen. 7 o'clock a.m. until 7.15 a.m. is morning meditation. 11.30 a.m. Wednesday prayer. 12 noon, Wednesday Bible study. The meeting ID, the passcode, and the dial-in phone information is listed there on the screen. This is a reminder for all members of the combined choir. Rehearsal will be held this week, Tuesday and Thursday at 6 p.m. sharp. Remember to check in on our sick and shut-in, as well as to keep them lifted up in prayer. Take a moment to read our prayer list, Remember, we love, we care, we share. It is a family affair. And those sick and shut in need our support just as much, if not more, than our CFBC family members that you see every week. Thank you for all of your time. 
Have a blessed week. Good morning. I'm going to read the King James Version of Galatians 4, verses 1 through 7. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, God has set forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son, but if a son, then a heir of God through Christ. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word.
looks good on you. The gift that looks good on you. And you wear it well. God has graced you. And you wear it well. It looks good on you. It looks good on you. The gift that looks good on you. It looks good. The gift that looks good on you. It looks good on you.
Spirit of the Lord is with us today. What a blessing it is to know the Lord and to be open to experiencing his presence. Thank God for his presence here today and for each of you who are worshiping with us and for this music ministry. We thank God for ushering in. God into this place. We know that the Spirit is here because we know there is no place where God is not present. Sometimes it's good to know that we are open to experiencing the manifestation of God's presence in our midst. I want to thank our music musicians as well. Well, um, I'm limited in time, so uh, I want to, I, I, I intend to, to say a word, but I want to take a moment before I move into the message today to say once again welcome to all of our visitors who are worshiping with us see some of you who have been here before and you are returning and we want you to know that we are grateful to god each time that he blesses you to return to our worship experience and to all of our members and our friends who are worshiping with us to those of you who are with us through our streaming experience, we praise God for your presence as well. I also want to acknowledge the presence of our new administrative assistant, Sister Kimberly Sales, who's with us. Sister Kimberly, welcome. Welcome. <clears throat> now, I had, had the opportunity to interview and meet with Sister Kimberly and it's just been a blessing as I've shared with you how we've been praying that God would put the person that he has assigned into the position. We know that God has blessed us with Felicia and um, she's been passing the torch to Sister Kimberly. When I met with Sister Kimberly, she said, Pastor, she said, I don't want to steal any thunder at all from Sister Felicia. She said, but she has been such a tremendous blessing to me. Amen. Would it be appropriate for me to come and celebrate the service that she's given to this church as well? And I said, I, I think that would be a blessing. It would show the way that the torch has been passed on, as I mentioned in the church meeting, as Paul mentions, one lays the foundation, another builds upon the foundation. Amen. So Kimberly is able to build upon that foundation. So welcome to our worship today, Sister Kimberly. Also, last week we had a, a person who raised their hand, and in my attempt to be sensitive to this individual, I did not ask them to stay after, and I'm going to ask them to stay after, and in case they try to leave, I'm going to call them out now. I'm going to have them to stand up. And if they decide that they want to leave, we're going to stop them at the door. And Sister Denise, okay, there she is. <laughs> God bless you, Denise. Uh, <laughs> uh, you already know you're welcome, but uh, we want to make it all official. So we got to get the official process going, okay? So make sure you see Deacon Bigelow uh, before you leave service today. Brother Norman, if you want to be with her, that's perfectly good fine. That's perfectly fine. You can do that. And then I want to also, because this is the first Sunday. I'm going to have to acknowledge all of December birthday. <laughs> Most of the time.
sometimes I'm, I'm quite proud to admit that that is my assistant, but uh, every now and then she makes me leery. Uh, happy birthday, happy birthday to all of the December birthdays. And also, uh, there are some of you in, in December who are celebrating wedding anniversaries. So. Amen. <laughs> Congratulations, Robin. <laughs> uh, where is Barry? <laughs> He's working all right. Well, we praise God for the both of you. Uh, let's see. And if you are uh, worshiping with us by YouTube or Facebook, I would encourage you to subscribe to us or to, um, to follow us um, if you're on Facebook. So we certainly appreciate that. Now I'm going to, I have a word from the Lord that I want to share with you. Uh, the exciting thing about this word is that God has given me uh, a, a huge dose of it, but gratefully, uh, I'm, I'm grateful that he has given it to me in doses. So I am able to dispense it in doses. Uh, Councilman uh, how, uh, Penrose, it's so good to have you worshiping with us as well. God bless you. We appreciate your presence as well. We thank God for you. I meant to acknowledge you the last time you were you were with us, uh, but as you can see, sometimes I get up here and I go too long or too short, but I, I caught you today, so thank God for your presence. Uh, but I have this in dosing, so I'm going to be able to give you a dose today, and then I can dispense the rest of it at another time. All right. Now, here's what I'd like to do for those of you who were not with us, uh, just so you understand, if you want to get more of the understanding behind this message today, you can go back and look at the series because this is capping off a series of messages that was started uh, in September, sometime in September, where I encourage you to lose the distractions. So it, it right. sort of connects to that, but it's a standalone message. So it stands all by itself. You don't have to go back and get that if you don't want to. But if you are inclined to want to get more, you are able to do that. And if you'd like to get more, it's going to be um, shared at a later time for, the, for future dosing. Having said that, we're going to pray that God's spirit would move upon us. As I shared last week and week before last, um, the door of a deed uh, enhances the quality of the thing being done when the door is fully present in the doing of a thing. And it's like me to twist things up. Essentially all that is saying that if you listen fully, you will enhance the quality of your listening. If you receive fully, you will enhance the quality of what it is that God desires for you to receive. Now I want to say that and then I'm going to preface that by saying that when God's word goes forth, it never returns unto him void. So you are here because God wants you to be here. And I want to encourage you to be fully engaged in the listening of the word of God today. So I'm going to invite you to pray. We're going to pray and invite the Holy Spirit to enhance our listening and receiving capacity. Father, we thank you for your word that is a lamp unto our feet and a light that guides our lives. We pray now for each person who's present, those who are present not only physically but virtually. We ask that you would anoint their ears to hear, our hearts to, to receive, and these lips of clay to proclaim the truths that you desire to deposit into the lives of your faithful ones. Bless each person and the message we pray and ask it, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Sister Melody, for reading the word of God for us today from out of the book of Galatians. And, and the, for those of you who were listening and may want to hear it again, but when the fullness of time was come, Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman under the law. I want to use for a topic today 
living in God's fullness. When the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law. One again, living in God's fullness. There is a line from the play, A Raisin in the Sun, and it is <clears throat> my favorite line, actually. And the line uh, is this, there is always something left to love. And this was spoken by the mother to her daughter when she was really upset about the brother who had messed up and lost all of the money they were anticipating to help them move out of the life that they were living. But it was also spoken to those in the audience, to those of us who have not yet learned how to see the common thread in our humanity. Those who have not yet learned to see the common thread in our humanity. It was a message of hope in the midst of decline. As we enter uh, this season known as the Advent season, uh, sometimes it's known as the holiday season, the Christmas season, um, it is a time for us to renew our call to live in God's fullness. Without hope, our ability to live in God's fullness is diminished. So it's a message of hope. Without hope, without hope, our ability to live in God's fullness is diminished. And so we want to make sure that we understand what Paul is writing to the Galatians in the fourth chapter. In the fourth chapter, what Paul says is that living in God's fullness, I'm going to give you the, uh, the, uh, the, in the short version of the message today, and I want to give you three points, and we'll build on them later on, but for today I think it will make sense that the first thing we must do in order to live in God's fullness is to make sense of our past. To live in God's fullness, we have to learn how to make sense of our past. And so I want you to see what Paul writes in the first. He says, now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all, but is under the tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Understand that the past is linked to the present. That's what Paul is arguing as he's writing to the Galatians, that the past is linked to the present. The problem is we don't always know how the past is linked to the present. So one way to think about the past is to see it from the perspective of where you are rather than from the perspective of where you were. Let me say that again. As you examine the past, something happened in your past, you can look at what happened in the past from the perspective of where you were when it happened, and that would be a static perspective of the past. In other words, you look at the past and what you experienced in the past and the way that you interpreted what you experienced in the past is always the way that you interpret what you experienced in the past. Sometimes you can get stuck in the past. But if you understand and are able to make sense of the past, you can look at the past and understand the past from where you are today and not from where you were when the past occurred. Does that make sense? Yes. So what Paul is saying to the church and the leaders at Galatia is that in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son. But what he was saying is that while the son was still a child, the child different no, was no different than the servants. Okay, The child was just like the servants. That was in the child's past. But when the fullness of time came, the child no longer had to look at the past from the same perspective. 
the child is now able to look at the past from a different perspective. The child is able to discern not only the past, but the role of the past. And so Paul seeks to help us understand the past by using specific language. He uses the past as something that is no longer now. That's the Greek word that he says, the past is no longer now. The past is in the past. The past is no longer now, but the past is not yet the not yet. Oh man, I just said that. The past is no longer the now because the past is behind us. But the past is not the future because the future hasn't arrived yet. So in order to live in the fullness of God, you have to understand what God is doing in the now. And God uses the now based off of what has happened in the past. What he is saying is that the past was designed to teach us something. If you don't learn from the past, you're inclined to repeat the past. And because the past has an assignment to be our tutor and to be our governor and to guide us through life, the tutor and the governor will continue teaching us the same lessons over and over until the fullness of time arrives when we are able to gain the lessons from the past. When we are able to gain the lessons from the past, then we can make sense of our past and understand that the role of the past is to equip us for the present. Can I move on? The role of the past is to prepare us for the present. Now, in order to live in the fullness of God, in God's fullness, you have to first be able to do what? Thank you, Sister Esther. I, I was going to have to go back and do that, all, that whole segment all over again. In order to live in, the, in God's fullness, we have to learn how to make sense of our past. Are you following? To make sense of the past is to understand that the past had an assignment to prepare us for the future. Okay? So then in order to make sense of the past, we must understand that the past had an assignment. Paul says that the past was simply a tutor. It was a governor. It was designed to lead us and guide us and teach us lessons in order for us to make space for the present. Right. Okay. That's point number two. You have to make sense of the past in order to make space for the present. That's a play on words too. Because the moment you are in right now is a present. It is a gift. But it is also the moment that we are living in right now. So the moment that I'm living in right now, I'm not able to fully live in God's fullness if I'm not able to embrace what God is doing right now. If I'm stuck in the past... I can't embrace what God is doing right now. Let, let, me, let me do it like this. Paul was writing to a group of leaders who understood that God had given them the law. The law was given in the past, but the law had a, a, a function. The law's function was to be a tutor and a governor to help the people of faith know how to live their lives. That's all it was supposed to be. And then when God brought forth his son, Jesus Christ, they wanted everyone who wanted to believe in Jesus Christ to have access to Jesus Christ through the law. But Paul said the law was back then. The law is not for now. And if you're stuck in the law, which was in the past, you're not making space for the present. You're not making space for the gift. You're not making space for the grace that God is pouring into your life right now. 
So the past was behind us. The present is now because it is a gift from God. God has grace that he wants to pour into your life right now. But if you don't make room for the space of God's grace right now because you are holding on to something in the past, you will not be able to appreciate the fullness of God that he has for your life. All right. Can I move on? All right. This is the in, this is the indented version. This is the this is the uh, condensed version. Uh, so, in order to live in God's fullness, the first thing we have to do is do what? Make sense of the past. There's some stuff in your past that's got you bound. That's got you restricted. The law had them restricted. God was saying, I am now giving you full access to all that I have to offer, and yet you are still holding on to the past. In order to get all of God has for you in the present, which is the now, you must make sense of the past. The past was designed to teach you some lessons. What were the lessons that the past were designed to teach you? First of all, the lessons were designed to teach you that no weapon formed against you will prosper because you're here today. You had to go through some stuff to get where you are today. You have to learn, as Paul said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? You had to go through some difficulties and some valleys and over some mountains and through some hardships. But you're here today. So the lesson, the tutor, the governor was teaching you that no matter where you are, God is your rock and your fortress. That God is your strong tower. He is able to keep you and protect you. That God is your shield and your buckler that God will protect you and keep you from all harm and danger. That's just some of the stuff that the past was designed to teach you. You thought that the, the past was designed to hurt you, but the past was designed to teach you that God is always with you. You got to make space for what God is trying to do in the present. God is doing some things right now. Now, if you understand and make room for the present, the last point is, wow, that you will not only make sense of the past, you will not only make space for the present, but you will make a joyful sound unto the Lord because you understand what the past was designed to do. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman under the law. You have to make space for the present, the gift of God. What? To redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. That's the gift. That's the present that God has given to us, the adoption of sons. Now, when I understand that God has adopted me into his family, when when God has, you know, when, when you get adopted into a family and you happen to come from a place that there's meager means and then all of a sudden somebody adopts you into their family and they got a whole big house, a mansion, and they got a big yard and you can go and live in all of that stuff and you have access to all of that stuff. At first, you don't really think you deserve to be in all of the fullness of God and so you just kind of stay in your little corner because you don't think you are worthy of all of that but then he says and because you are sons God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts whereby you cry you make a joyful sound unto God for what God has done in your present 
So in order to live in God's fullness, you have to be able to make sense of your past. You got to make space for the present. But then when you know you are there, you'll make a joyful sound and nobody can stop you from making a joyful sound because of what God, because he puts it in your heart so that the spirit in you jumps out so that you cry, Abba, Father. And when you cry, Abba, Father, that means Abba means that my daddy can supply all of my needs. That means that there is no weapon that's formed against me that will ever prosper because he's my Abba Father. He's my daddy and my daddy protects me and my, my daddy watches over me and my daddy stations angels all around me by day and by night. That means I can leap over buildings and I can walk through the fire. I don't have to worry what comes or what goes. Abba Father means that God's got it all under control. Abba Father means that God has the fullness of whatever I need. If I need peace, I got full peace. If I need joy, I got full joy. If I need love, I got full joy. My spirit cries out, Abba, Father, I make a joyful sound unto God. Living in God's fullness. Next time you find yourself concerned or worried or feeling bad or having a sense of regret or remorse about something that happened or should have happened or ought to have happened, but it didn't happen the way you thought it should happen. Bring yourself back. And you say, okay, that's one way to look at that, but I'm not going to allow that to restrict me in that moment. That moment was designed to teach me some lessons. And I'm going to take the lessons so that when I embrace the lessons, I can transfer those lessons into my present and make space for what God is doing as he's pouring in grace in my life for right now. And when I experience the grace that God has for my life, I can begin to praise God for all that he's done. I can only imagine what it is like to be in his presence. And with one thing we know is our objective is to maintain, establish and maintain an unbroken awareness of God's presence. The question is what degree of intensity do you want to exist and dwell in the presence of God? May God bless you with the word that you have heard. May it help you and transform your heart, transform your life, and enrich your journey, not only today, but in the days ahead. God bless you. Living in God's fullness. I want to pause and extend an invitation. Maybe you've been coming to church for a while. May not have fully understood what it means to live in the fullness of God. In the fullness of time. The word time is not the Kairos time. It is the Kronos time. It, sometimes it just takes a little while before we can get to where God wants us to be. It just takes a little while. That's the natural progression of God's plans. Maybe you've heard the gospel before. Maybe you have been in church before. But maybe today, this is the day that God has spoken to the depths of your heart to say there is a fullness that you have been omitting. You've been stuck in the corner. 
I, I have so much more for you. I want you to experience it. No, but, but I messed up in the past. I don't deserve it. No, 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 no. Understand that mess up in the past was supposed to teach you a lesson. The lesson was not to keep you bound in the past. That was supposed to teach you about my forgiveness, about my grace, because you're gonna encounter some folk that's gonna require you to extend forgiveness to them. And if you can't receive my forgiveness, how can you expect to extend forgiveness to somebody else? I want you, if you've never made the decision to say, yes, I'm going to live in God's fullness. I'm going to receive salvation. I'm going to receive redemption. I'm going to receive sanctification. I'm going to let God transform my mind. I'm going to let God renew my heart. I'm going to let God regenerate me. I'm going to let God fix me up so that he can get the most out of my present. If you're here today and you've never said yes to Jesus, I want to extend an invitation for you to say yes to Jesus. Your life will be blessed. Your path will be brighter. Your burdens will be lighter because you'll cast all of your cares upon him and he will carry your weight for you. Is there one here today? One here today. Say, so yes, I want to accept Christ as my Savior. If you're online and you're hearing this message for the first time, maybe you were strolling through and it was by no accident that you stopped to hear the message, to make sense of your past, because maybe you were struggling with your past. Maybe you had become so hopeless, full of despair based off of the things that you see going on around you. You really weren't able to make space for what God intended for you to receive today. But now that you've heard the word, it doesn't return into the void. You understand what it is that needs to happen. You gotta meet God halfway. You gotta be able to walk just that first step and he will meet you. And you're ready to make a joyful sound Yes, Lord. When the angels in heaven hear that sound, yes, they start rejoicing. They rejoice because the enemy has had to release the bound that he has on you. If you're here, just type your name in the chat. Leave a way for us to reach out to you. We will definitely contact you. Here's a second call for those of you who are on stream or also in our worship service today. If the spirit of the Lord is moving upon you. I, I like that. It's the spirit, the spirit. God has sent forth his spirit, the spirit of his son. Jesus said, don't worry about what, what happens tomorrow. Don't worry about it. When the spirit moves on you, you say yes. And then you become attuned to hearing and responding to the voice of the Spirit. The Spirit is moving upon your heart to connect with this ministry. Say yes, say yes, yes. You don't have to worry about anything after that because God has it all under control. Is there one here today? Step your hand up in the air, we'll see. And here is the final call. There may be someone here who, at one point in time, you walked in the fullness of God. That, that's what Paul was writing. He said, wait a minute, Galatians, you guys were walking by faith. Who has bewitched you? Who caused you to go back to think that the old way was better than the new way? because you encountered some challenges, because you encountered some different logic. No, this thing is done by the Spirit. If God is seeking to renew you back to a place of restored relationship with him, just lift your hand up in the air. We'll pray with you. We'll pray with you. How many of you want to leave this place with more hope? 
more hope. My God, it is so easy to lose hope in light of the tragic wars, in light of crime, in light of the political situation, the global situation, local situations. But just remember that all things, even though they pass our understanding, all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. And we may never be able in our logical mind to understand how evil things can work together for good. Today we're going to we're going to observe our communion. And it is the most evilest experience in all of humanity that Jesus said if it's possible let this cup pass from me. And yet somehow God was able to take that evil deed the crucifixion of his only begotten son and turn it into something good for our salvation. All things, all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. And so if you want to have more hope, we do that by understanding and making sense of the past, making space for the present and making a joyful sound for all that God has, is, and will do. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for your word today. Thank you for the presence and the manifestation of your spirit in the midst of our worship experience. Thank you for those who came to be in your presence who wanted to be in the presence of other believers to worship you together in faith. But we will remember the sacrifice that you made on Calvary's cross, the blood that was shed, the life that was given, that we might have everlasting life. And so we pause to say thank you for all that you have done to bring salvation to the world joy to the world the Lord has come we're grateful that you have come into this world and we're asking you to help us make room prepare our hearts for the newness that you desire to manifest and show teach us in this season keep our hearts open our minds full of understanding and our hearts full of compassion Help us to share the good news of Jesus Christ in every dimension of life to those with whom we interact. And now we're mindful of those who are in the hospital, those who are at home, those who are working through diagnosis, maybe diagnosis that were not favorable. Help us to be mindful, dear God, that you already know what it is that we are going through and have already supplied sufficient grace to go through all of life's circumstances. So even when the circumstances aren't what we desire, remind us that you are in control and somehow you will get the glory out of all things. Bless your name today for what you have done. We bless your name today for what you are doing. Continue to use us for your glory. We pray and ask these and all blessings in Jesus' name. Together, children of God, say amen. amen. I want to take a moment now to prepare our hearts for our tithes and offering. We had a church meeting yesterday, and we're just grateful, as our treasurer shared with, the, with those who were in attendance, for your faithful support of this ministry. It makes it possible for us to do what we are able to to do to carry out the mission of this ministry. Lives are being transformed and touched, uplifted. 
And we also want to ask those of you who are able to increase your giving in 2024 by $20 per month or $240 in 2024. Uh, 24 more in 24. Don't worry about that, Brother Gene. I was, I was working on something. It just slipped out of my mind. Brother Gene said, what did he just say? Uh, don't worry about it. But it was, it was, I was moving towards something here. Okay. Uh, so, uh, 240 more in 24. Is that better? That's better. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So if you're able to do that, not everybody is, and we're not pressuring those of you who are not, but if those of you who are able, it will help us to reach our faith projected budget for 2024. And if you're able to front load that, of course that helps us, but that's our goal, 24,000 over and above what we would normally receive in 2024 is our goal. So if you're able to support the ministry in that way, we would appreciate that those of you who are viewing by stream, if you're so inclined to support with an, an additional uh, $20, per month or 240 this year, we would certainly appreciate your generosity. And for those of you who are regularly tithing, we encourage you to continue to do that. Those of you who are almost there, keep on, keep on pushing, keep on pressing. Uh, we, we'll get there. None of us have reached the mark in every area of our lives. How many of us still, we're still pressing toward the mark? I'm still pressing, I'm pressing, I'm trying to get there. So we're gonna do that together with the support and encouragement of each other. Our tithing affirmation, because God's word declares that the first portion, one-tenth of our income, already belongs to him, we bring our tithes to the church and present it unto the Lord in loving and cheerful obedience. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the resources you entrust to us. We realize that every penny that we get, it already belongs to you, for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. We are your people and we pray that you will lead us, guide us to be obedient to your word in every way that we possibly can. Now we thank you for the gifts and we thank you for the givers of the gifts to support this ministry as you have in the past. We believe that you will always do. You've given us the vision and we trust that you will give us the provision. Help us to be faithful and honoring our commitment to reach that goal. Thank you now for all that those who will give to support this ministry will share with us. Help us to be wise in our use of the resources that you get the glory and someone will be encouraged and uplifted as a result of this ministry. We pray and ask these and all blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. You can uh, prepare for your tithe if you have it in your hand. Uh, we're going to be giving that out immediately at the end of the service. Um, just make sure you don't forget, I'll remind you at the end, we're going to do our communion and then we have the lighting of our Christmas tree, beautiful Christmas tree. I want to thank the decorating committee for making the sanctuary beautiful. And, and then we'll have our benediction. So for now, if you would like to support us in your offering, you can do that online with Givelify or PayPal. Write your check out, you can send it. And those of you who are planning to give your offering today, please give exactly what the Spirit is leading you to give. And when it is time to give your offering, we're going to invite you to be seated now. And then we're going to do the offering at the end of the service where you can deposit it in the baskets that the trustees will have. We're going to prepare now for our church covenant, the reading of our church covenant. And I forgot to mention that if you desire to support the effort of um, our $24,000 effort, it's called Spirit-Led Giving. So if you, if you do that and you want to write that on your envelope, you can just make a notation in spirit-led giving. You can put that on the envelope. And if you are using PayPal and you, uh, or uh, Givelify and you would like to do that, it's, a, it's an option under other. And you can see that that option would be spirit-led giving. And you can put your donation 
in that category, spirit-led giving. It's part of our habit of the spirit effort. Spirit-led giving. All right. Our church covenant together, having been led by the Spirit of God to profess our faith in Jesus Christ and having been baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we do now solemnly and joyfully affirm our covenant with God and with each other. We pledge to serve Christ and the fellowship of this congregation. We shall endeavor to love one another, to remember one another in prayer, to share in each other's joys, and to sustain each other in times of distress. We aspire to be a fellowship of the concerned where the lost may find Jesus Christ, sinners may find pardon, seekers may find meaning for their lives, and where all who come may find welcome. We shall strive to be responsible church members through faithful attendance, study, and giving. We shall seek to be obedient to Christ in our daily living, within our home, in our labor, and while at leisure, we shall strive for attitudes and actions which will reflect God's spirit working through us. Believing that our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, we shall endeavor to avoid experiences and habits which defile the body and hinder our witness together in a fellowship of faith with all who confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we shall pray and labor for a spirit of unity among all Christians, believing that our call to be a church is a call to witness in the world. We dedicate ourselves anew as servants of the Lord of all life. Whenever people are in bondage to ignorance, poverty, fear, or prejudice, we shall strive for justice, freedom, dignity, and peace. Whenever people are separated by barriers of hostility and distrust, we shall be ministers of God's reconciling love. As we pledge our support to the work of our missionaries throughout the world, ourselves to the mission to which God calls us all, acknowledging our human frailties and ever seeking forgiveness, we profess our need of the Holy Spirit and commit our lives to Jesus Christ and through him to the care, the judgment, the deliverance, and the mercy of Almighty God. Amen. Amen. Deacon Miller will lead us in our communion prayer. Let us pray. Father, we come once again to say thank you. We thank you for another day, God. We thank you for how you kept us all week long. Then, oh God, you brought us back to the household of faith just one more time. And we come to say thank you. God, we thank you right now for the blood that give us strength, God day to day. We thank you, God, that it will never, ever lose its power. And for that, God, we say thank you. God, as we take these elements, we ask right now, God, that you would forgive us for all of our sins, God. God, right now, we have an art against our sister and our brother. We ask right now, in the name of Jesus, that you would forgive us, God. God, bless this communion. We thank you right now, and we give you honor and we give you glory for this day. Have your way right now in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you, and we give you honor and glory. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to make sure that everyone has a communion kit. If you don't have one, just raise your hand. The deaconess will make sure that you have one here. 
Jesus was betrayed. He took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And he said unto his disciples, This bread represents my body, which is given for you. Take and eat. And likewise, he took the cup and he blessed it. He gave thanks for it. And he said, this cup represents my blood, which will be shed for the remission of many sins. Each of you take and drink. And just as the bread and the juice is assimilated into our bodies, we pray that the presence of Christ would be assimilated into our lives, that we might live in God's fullness. All that he desires for us to have through redemption and salvation shall be ours. Can I get a cordless microphone? Over here at the tree, the Christmas tree, which no, no, not yet. Uh, we, we're we're here at the Christmas tree, and uh, we're going to light it. Uh, we know that this little light of mine works, uh, and the Christmas tree is a symbol, again of of hope really it's it's a it's a symbol of hope because uh, the the green on the tree is evergreen which means that it is green all year round and because it is green all year round it means that the life that we have in Christ is alive and vibrant all year round and it also has lights and these lights they symbolize the hope that we bring to the world so Jesus said that we are to be the light of the world. And this Christmas tree is a reminder each time you come into the sanctuary of our responsibility to be uh, the light of the world. So I'm going to invite you to rest on your feet as we prepare for our benediction. And on uh, the countdown to one, we'll go ahead and have it lit. Five, four, three, two, one. 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 This little light of mine.
Amen, 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 amen. Let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine. You have your offering ready. Uh, Denise, you can't leave yet. All right. All right. And if uh, I was reminded that if you want to catch the series, it's on our YouTube stream, cornerstonefbc.org. You can go on and find it on our YouTube stream, the series uh, leading up to the message today. And we praise God for your presence. Pray God's richest blessings over you as we go into this Advent season. Be mindful of the hope that God gives us through the birth and anticipation of the life of Christ. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. And all of God's children together said amen, amen. God bless you and go in peace.